Super Mario Maker 2's final major update came with many new features, and among them was the Mecha Koopa. Honestly, it was a bit surprising that they weren't already in Mario Maker, since they were a major part of Bowser's boss fight from Super Mario World, they're quite a common airship enemy, and they've even been featured in some of Bowser Jr.'s moves in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Now, if only Dry Bones was put in Smash. But anyway, back to the Mecha Koopas. While they did take a while to eventually come, it was certainly worth the wait as we not only got the normal variants, but two new types as well with the blue one that shoots out lasers, and a red one that shoots out heat-seeking missiles. So it's pretty safe to say that there is quite a lot that these guys can do, so today, as some of you have requested, I'll be going over some tips, tricks, and ideas on how to use the Mecha Koopas in some of your levels. Before we get started though, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and maybe even subscribe, but with that out of the way, let's jump into some tips, tricks, and ideas for the Mecha Koopas in Super Mario Maker 2. As always, we'll start with some more simple tips, but get more complicated as the video continues. First off is obviously that they're pretty useful for enemies and airship levels. Also bear with me here, as if there's one thing I'm not good at making in Mario Maker, it's good looking airships. But yes, they work very well as basic enemies for these levels. Not only that, but since they can be picked up and thrown, they are very useful for grabbing secrets. For example, maybe there is a 10 coin between airships, which would obviously be a death trap if Mario were to jump into it. However, using the Mecha Koopa, you can grab it that way. While I'm talking about their basic uses, I might as well go over some of the items that the Mecha Koopa can interact with in some way. Small Mecha Koopas can be jumped on, then grabbed by Mario. It will stay down for a short period of time before waking up. However, spin jumping on it will reset the timer, along with going through doors or pipes. Upon being kicked or thrown, they can defeat all enemies on screen now, and they can additionally damage all bosses. They can be used to collect coins, big coins, pink coins, and keys. In the Super Mario World theme, if they're thrown up, they can interact with bricks, question mark blocks, invisible blocks, POWs, and on-off switches. They only activate them from below, however, so throwing them at their sides won't work. They will also activate note blocks from below and above as well. They will not get affected by fire flowers. Big Mecha Koopas will be able to activate P-Switches if they're walked onto. Now let's go into some of the unique things for the other Mecha Koopa types. Both of them won't fall off ledges like normal ones do, which is extremely helpful as you'll see later. Blue Mecha Koopas will shoot out lasers which can damage the player but also destroy some things. Small ones can only break bricks, but the big ones can actually break all of our breakable blocks. Well, except clouds of course. The red ones shoot out missiles which will explode after a short period of time. There's nothing special about these explosions though, as they work basically the exact same as a bomb. Well, now that we know all these, let's jump into some more complex ideas. This one is actually a fairly different one. In either the nighttime of the sky or the airship, Mecha Koopas, like most enemies, will become low gravity. Now this is very interesting, as if you decide to repeatedly spin on them in either the Mario World or New Soup themes, you can see that you are able to actually stay in the air and keep gaining height all the way up until you reach the ceiling. There's quite a few interesting things you can do with this. You could make a challenge where a player has to scale a wall, maybe go across a large gap, and maybe you could even have some obstacles. I will say it's significantly harder to perform in the nighttime airship theme, as Mario himself doesn't have low gravity. Now this is actually very hard to perform, so if you want to have obstacles, I suggest making it get a small portion of your level, and if you want your whole level to revolve around this, I would suggest making it quite short or have quite a few checkpoints. Maybe this technique can be used to hide some sort of secret in your levels. Or for those who are actually playing levels, this may be a good way to easily cheese some levels, as it allow you to fly over the whole thing. I can also see this possibly being used in some sort of fun multiplayer race level. The best application for it though would likely be Kaiser levels or don't touch the ground levels. For the latter, what you could do is have a level based around spin jumping and then have the player already spinning so that when they go into the small portion with the Mecha Koopa. Either way, I'm excited to see some more low gravity shenanigans with Mecha Koopas. Also, I suggest having a Z made out of track so the player knows that they're supposed to spin jump, which will help out some confused players a lot. Next up we have a survival section using the blue Mecha Koopas. Mario is trapped in a very cramped space with the blue Mecha Koopa directly facing him. He does notice, however, that there are luckily some on-off blocks that will protect him from the laser. Unfortunately though, upon activating this, a muncher below him starts to make his way to chomp on Mario. What Mario has to do in order to pass this room is that he has to time his on-off switch presses very carefully so that he is both able to block the laser, but then stop the muncher just before it gets to him. Eventually, a timer above him will expire, allowing Mario to leave. The setup is quite simple, but pretty customizable and fun. First off, the Mecha Koopa is placed inside its own separate area with a one way to block Mario from going into him. It's also stacked on top of a muncher in order to keep him still. 
Speaking of which, the muncher below is where you can really start customizing this fight. Personally, I like the conveyor belt to be 6 tiles long and on double speed, which is a good time frame to hit the switch, but it still isn't too generous. This can of course be made harder or easier by either changing the conveyor belt speed or its length. The final big component is of course the timer, which really isn't anything new if you've watched any of my other videos. Basically, the spike ball will shoot out of this blaster, which will slowly destroy all these bricks, until eventually getting to the one with the muncher on top that will then activate a P-switch. This timer can of course be extended to make the boss harder or shortened to make it easier. Make sure that the bullet blaster will never be directly above Mario or to the right of him, as then it won't shoot out any spike balls, so make sure if you want to make a short timer, keep it to the left. Two more final small notes about this are having P-switch blocks here make it slightly easier as it'll kill the muncher if he so happens to be there when the timer expires, and it'll also block the Mecha Koopa, which I think makes sense to do, since the boss is technically already over and you wouldn't really want anybody to lose after they already survived the timer. The second thing is this contraption over here, which is usually pretty good to have with most timers using P-switches. Basically, once a P-switch has been activated, this contraption will make sure it stays on until the player leaves, which is helpful as some players may be silly and just forget to leave the room in time. Overall, this is a fun and pretty customizable little survival room using the blue Mecha Koopas, which I just learned are actually called Zappa Mecha Koopas. Our next tip is using these mechanics of the Mecha Koopa in some sort of speedrun level. Main things that really make them unique from other throwable items are A, their timer that does not get reset upon being kicked or thrown, B, that they can be spin jumped on, and C, spin jumping is the only way to reset their timer. So keeping all this in mind, I developed a small demonstration of how it could all be used in a few scenarios. Basically, the main point of this small level is to get to the end of the level quickly enough like any other speedrun, however, in this, you have to do it before the Mecha Koopa is able to wake up. Now a lot of this demonstration is fairly basic speedrun stuff, so we won't go into all of it, however there are a few segments that are important to note for the Mecha Koopas. Starting off with this very simple contraption at the very start. Since Mecha Koopas will go into their knockdown state if a block below them is destroyed, having it on top of two bricks, then a bomb, then a winged brick, will cause the Mecha Koopa to instantly be knocked out right as the level begins. This setup is also quite helpful for other items like if you want to give Mario's shells, but in our example, it's obviously used for the Mecha Koopa. Some small obstacles occur with spinning on piranha plants before we have to throw the Mecha Koopa. Making something like this out of tracks will indicate that an item needs to be thrown. Then, we get to the next important thing here where the player will spin on top of the Mecha Koopa. This will extend its timer, meaning that you'll be able to make the level even longer or shorter depending on how many of these timer resets you have in it. You could also reset their timers by going through doors and pipes, however I like this a lot better as it keeps the flow of the level going. Now an important thing to know about this is that the player can't normally jump on them, only spin jump. So what I suggest doing is have either a Z made out of tracks again, or a small jump on piranha plants first, as that will already put them in the motion of spinning. The rest of the level is pretty much a few more tight jumps and such until the ending where we have to use the Mecha Koopa just before it wakes up to kill the piranha plants in our paths. Now to some of you this may seem weird. Why not have a clear condition where the player just has to hold the Mecha Koopa in order to clear the level? That way it'd not only be a simpler ending, but it'd help the player realize that they need to keep the Mecha Koopa throughout the level. And I 100% agree with you, but for some reason, Nintendo legitimately forgot to add a clear condition about carrying Mecha Koopas. So my final words for this segment are, come on Nintendo, give Mecha Koopas the justice they deserve and give them a clear condition. Wait, they don't have these for Buzzy Beetles, Spinies, or Galoombas either? Heck, not even snowballs? I mean, sure, the last two I guess I understand, but you allow Koopa shells to be clear conditions, but not Buzzy Beetle shells or Spiny shells? Well, anyways, I think they should get these clear conditions, but I also think Mecha Koopas could work great as centers for speedrun levels. This here was just a small demonstration, so I wonder how much more talented speedrun creators may be able to use them. Our next challenge is another survival room, however, this time it's with the Blasted Koopas. Mario is on top of a small platform of hard blocks, however above him, Blasted Koopas shoot down towards him. Since their bullets will act as explosions if they're not defeated in time, they will begin to eat away at Mario's small platform if he doesn't defeat them. In order for Mario to beat this challenge, he'll need to defend off as many of the Blasted Koopa bullets as he can, until eventually the timer will expire, allowing him to leave. This idea here is pretty simple. Basically, the Mecha Koopas will be on tracks, and unable to interact with Mario due to the one ways. Above them is again another spike ball timer that can be customized to your liking. This will once again activate a P-Switch, and I decided to make it to where all blocks here are filled in, as you wouldn't want to make it impossible to win at any point. And that's pretty much it for this design. 
You can of course customize how many of them are shooting at you. For this example, I chose too big and too small as I thought it worked best. Although I guess you can make it super chaotic, though I'm not even sure if that'd be possible at that point. Additionally, you could possibly use this in a completely different way, where instead of a survival room, maybe it takes place in a boss fight. In this example, I used Roy, but really most other bosses except Bowser can work. I also of course removed the timer, and I moved the Mecha Koopas upwards to give Mario and Roy some more room to move. You could keep a large amount of Mecha Koopas, I suppose, but I would definitely suggest lowering how many there are, as it can get a bit chaotic. Now, the only real difficult thing for me was making an exit. Roy would of course give you a key, but I wasn't sure what to put the key door on. It can't be a breakable block or the room could be made impossible very easily, but having it be on a ground block, for example, would encourage camping. My best solution was to just put it on a blue platform on a track, so that you can only go on it once, which means you can't camp on it. But either way, in a survival room or a boss fight, the Blast and Mecha Koopas can be very helpful. You can also make this a slight bit harder if you want to by making the whole room icy, by either putting it in the ice nighttime theme or just placing ice blocks. Our final small idea here is how useful they can be when carried or moved. For these examples, I'll mostly be using the Zappa Mecha Koopas. The major thing with them is that they are movable brick breakers that don't run out of a use. It is unfortunate that the lasers can't activate on-off switches, however having them be able to break bricks is still quite useful. For example, maybe you can make a small puzzle where Mario has to pick up one and move them around to destroy some bricks. The one on screen is pretty simple, however I'm sure they can be made really complex. Another use for them is maybe having secrets placed behind bricks in your level. Maybe if you take a Zappa Mecha Koopa from a previous or following section, then you could get some sort of reward, like coins, one-ups, or even power-ups. I think this would be a great use for traditional levels. One final thing though, is that these can possibly be used for cheese. If you have either Zappa or Blasted Mecha Koopas in your level, make sure that they can't be used to break parts of your levels by breaking bricks. An easy way to do this is just to make sure that the walls, ceilings, and floors aren't made of breakable blocks, so that cheese won't generally be an issue. I mean, there's really never a reason to make them out of stuff like bricks anyway, so usually just going with ground is pretty good. If you don't want players to carry them to another section, you could possibly have a door set up like this, where there are enemies on tracks to either side of Mario, which causes the Mecha Koopa to be destroyed. Of course, if you are a player instead of a creator, it may be a good idea to carry one of these around, as you never know when they could help you. Just be careful about them waking up. But anyways, that's it for this video! Do you all think Mecha Koopas were a good addition? Let me know in the comments. I plan on making some bigger videos here soon in the future, around some of the power-ups or some random things, so make sure to stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and maybe even subscribe for more on Super Mario Maker 2 and anything else Nintendo Switch. Links to my Twitter and Discord server are in the description along with my Maker ID. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.